Before we return to the scene we had ended on last session, I want to take control of the camera for a second to pull back from the smoking remains of the police station that the three of you had just found yourself in the epicenter of the blast of. <coughs> back further and further, pulling back through city streets, up over the tops of buildings, as smoke and ash begin to cloud the sky over Yugoslavok, as the cries from the city streets, the snaps of gunfire, begin to fade into the distance, as we pull further and further back, until Yugoslavok itself, this whole hidden city, is simply a grey smear on the rolling green countryside. It is quiet out here. It's peaceful. The land rolls and breathes with the turning of the seasons. But in Yugoslavok, a different change is here. A brutal and bloody one. We cut to the sound of a knife rasping along a steel. The familiar tiles of the butcher shop that Kramer was in not too long ago. The butcher shop that Kirill, Mother Blood, herself uses. She stands in an apron, her hands pink, perhaps from simple full bloodness, but maybe just from staining so deep it cannot be scrubbed out. She stands in a slaughter room. A calf, freshly weaned, standing innocuously in front of her, its ears flicking curiously at the new smells, the smooth tile under its hooves. A bolt gun, the closed cap bolt that would normally be used to stun an animal such as this, hangs from a hook near the door. She pays it no mind. Pain gives death meaning, she mutters under her breath. She steps forth, the knife long and thin, one firm business-like hand gripping around the calf's mouth, forcing it shut. Pain gives death meaning, she mutters again as she brings the knife up into its throat. Its eyes bulge in confusion, then pain. Its hooves skitter across the tile that rapidly grows slick with blood, as little by little, inch by inch, the calf dies, its weight growing and leaning heavy and heavier in her hands until it slumps flat on the cold tile floor. Creel watches all of this with a stony detachment, only paying heed to the blood that gently gurgles down the sluice. She raises the knife to eye line and remarks her reflection in the blade, and the faintness of a smile plays across her lips. Pain brings salvation. And then we're back outside the police station. Broken metal, stone, shattered glass and blood. The exterior of the police station is a sight of carnage. Torrin's body already stiffens, still slumped where he lays in the upturned staff car. Alexei having at least been there at the man's final moments, giving his soul some place to find itself at the moment. Kramer. Yes. You had come to a resolution last time that to at least help the poor civilians who are stuck in the midst of all this chaos, but uh, accessing the uh, public broadcast system and sounding a full evacuation would probably be the best thing to do. Yeah, that, that, that sounds probably like the best thing to do to limit casualties. Alas, the 
police station, which would have been one of the access points, is now just rubble. And the only other place is within Site B, at the main control antenna. Unfortunately, you are on foot, with no transportation, in the middle of what is rapidly becoming a war zone. The streets of mm. Yugoslavok are winding and treacherous. There may be no friends, but there are plenty of potential enemies out there, desperate and confused, angry and self-righteous. Hmm. I mean, I guess we better get a move on, right? Uh, I'll say our only car is basically blown up. All right. Well, I guess the first thing I would probably do, then in that case, if we're not getting a move on, is I, I would probably go over to his corpse. I don't necessarily think that I have the words off the top of my head to say much because I'd probably still be in a bit of shock. But I at least would like. Uh, is it like a charred corpse, or is it, can I like still uh, see his eyes open? Like, he is intact. It's just a piece of glass shot into his neck, and his last his last action really was just to make sure that you're okay. No fuck. In that case, I guess for now the only thing I could think of is just to close his eyes and and uh, tell them that we'll finish this. You know we'll. we'll We'll make sure that his death wasn't in vain and such. I guess. Would, would, would that be appropriate? I, I, you, d you don't have to look for appropriate. I, I was just kind of fishing to see if you wanted to say something about that. Honestly, I thought I did last time, so... I don't know if <laughs> you did, but it's, it's okay. Don't worry about it. And um, obviously, Alexei has been there, and Gregor um, has been milling about. <laughs> yeah, I've just kind of been vibing, I guess. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Vibing is not quite the term I would use for this turn of events, but alright, sure. Yeah, people are dying, whatever. <laughs> Fucking NKBD <laughs> death squad kicks in the door. Comrades, I was merely vibing. <laughs> I, mean, I kind of just see death as another stack, really, so. <laughs> not when you die. <laughs> well, it's not me this time, so. <laughs> right. So are the three of you uh, resolving to traverse Yugoslavok? I mean, uh, at in, this rate, in the direction of uh, Site B. Yeah, at this rate, that's probably our main like thing that we have to do. I mean, nameless. Do you, yeah. I mean, Alexi, do you have any uh, objections to this? O only that the government, only that Site B is a highly secure government facility. Um, yeah, but no, I. I he looks around at, at the the city. I don't think I have any plans. Future. I yeah. We we could we. It's not like we have any either, and we could probably use the uh, riots and the fact that we have this giant tentacle monster with us as our uh, you know oh, as yeah. an advantage. I mean, we should probably like. I imagine one of the civilians have a, has abandoned a car, so maybe we can go in search of that. That's true. That's 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 not a bad point to make. Maybe we might need some uh, something else to blend in as well. Maybe we can go in like all in suits. All in suits. It's, it's like what an you... official place, right? Okay, you're saying we should steal disguises. That's not bad. That's not mm. a bad idea. I like it. I mean, all right. I guess let's find. We can go to Site B. We can take out some guards as well, and then sneak our way in. I love these best laid plans being laid out like that's actually going to... <laughs> 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 I, I have this. Alexi holds up uh, the papers he stole from the general earlier. Ooh. That is... That, that, that would be very helpful, and I do have my demanding voice <laughs> that I could use to... Uh, 
I have my uh, ID card as well. Yeah, that, that could work out. All right, well, shit, then in that case, let's find a car then, and then we can uh, drive over there really quick. Hopefully that all the rioters, you know, didn't blow up or the car, every car in the city. I think the original plan was because they're expecting me to come and get you to give them over to them. Oh, shit, yes, you're right. So you've got, I think you've got to pretend to be a prisoner. All right, fuck it. I'm, I'm, I, yes, I do remember this, and I'm 100% down with it. Sorry, it's all the coke. <laughs> wait, Legit. It, wait, in game? Yeah, in game. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's all the coke. Well, in game and in real life, but you know, I, yeah, let's do it, dude. That sounds good. Can we, can we like find you like a potato sack? You can capture. Sure. All right. You could just blindfold me and mouth gag me or something too, but I, could, I guess that works. We could search the rubble of the police station, see if we could find uh, the appropriate paperwork. I mean, if it blew up, you think there would be any paperwork? Left? <laughs> I, I will be honest with you. Th this shit is on fire. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. I, was gonna say, I don't think there'd be any paperwork left. Explosives like... are the bureaucrat's natural enemy. Uh... <laughs> God, everything's yeah. out of order. How horrible. Shit. Alright, well... But yeah, if, if you are setting out to traverse you, the streets of Yugoslavog in, in search of a vehicle, or just getting in that general direction, I will need one of you to give me a roll with real, as you are navigating these dangerous streets. Uh, should I? Who has the highest us, real here? All of us. As it turns out, it's actually uh, it's actually Gregor. He has a plus one. Ah, oh, fuck. Yep. All right, Gregor, don't don't fail us. Now, one good thing here, because this is not a interpersonal roll, you will be rolling fake without the problems of just another face. Oh, sorry, you'll be rolling real without the problems of just another face. So you can get a partial success on this. Okay. Uh, so, exclamation mark roll, 2d6 plus 1. Oh, daddy needs a new pair of shoes. Okay, okay. See, see, that would have been so much worse if you'd had just another face in, in play. <laughs> so you set off, and unfortunately, due to the way that the city is laid out, with separate cars being really for only state officials and military use. Many of them are either currently being used by personnel who are run who are tearing ass down side streets or they are already smouldering wrecks flipped over. The trams and buses that would have normally been running have naturally just been left abandoned or crashed from side to side and those that are somewhat intact are still currently without keys or are at least in such bad condition that they're not really drivable. And I'll ask you, um, Gregor, since you rolled, roll me just one more d6. Just a regular plane, roll one d6. Uh, okay. Uh, fuck. I said one d6, but you know. Uh, 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 <laughs> I'll take the three, it's fine. There you got three anyway. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Incredible. Um, and yeah, as you pass um, pass down several kind of broad open streets, the kind of more metropolitan area of the city, you find the streets quiet. This is at least a somewhat peaceful area of the city. No major gunfights are occurring at any given moment, although you can still hear the familiar snap of rifle fire two or three streets down in one direction or another, the smell of burning diesel on the air. Until a door opens from one of the tenement blocks and a familiar-looking figure stumbles out of it. To you, at least, Gregor. Artemy is there. Oh, Stri fuck. Stripped to the waist, bloodied. His hair is a matted mess. His frame is full of the normal, hunched artificially as if he is struggling not to become a bear at this very moment. 
He stumbles down the stairs, grips onto one of the concrete uh, banisters that kind of guides the way, and screams a low, keening, grief-stricken scream. And sags to his knees. He has not seen you, but he is just doubled over on the pavement. Okay, I guess I'm going to ask, like, what the fuck happened? So you're just heading over to him? Yeah. Yeah, you you approach, and sure enough, you can just see his, his eyes are red, there are tears streaming down his face. He looks up at your approach. He seems to sniff the air and catches your scent before you're even within earshot of your footfalls. <gasps> Good oh God. Have, have you seen my boy? <laughs> no, what? What? Uh, what's happened? Where? What? Wallach. Uh, my my oldest. He 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 was part of part of the part of the citizens' guard. He he got called in when when everything began to happen. And, I don't know where my son is. I want my boy. Ah. Is he by any chance in the police station? Uh, he just look. He you he, he is close enough to hear that he heard that explosion, and he just looks at you, and you can tell he doesn't know. He's just holding on to some scrap of hope that that was not the case. Oh I, fuck! I I I can't find his scent. I he could be at one of the checkpoints, but he could be in the city. He could be in the fighting. He 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 was a good he was a good boy. He loved horses. He he never wanted to be a fighter, but they called him up and he had to answer. I need I need to find my my daughter and my grandchildren. They are still somewhere inside the city. He looks at you and you can see something is churning under his, like, churning under the surface. He looks over at, uh, at Kramer and Alexei as well. Okay, uh, is he, like, like, in handcuffs or anything like that, or...? He's not handcuffed, but it looks like he has been shot once or twice, um, but the wounds have almost fully healed over. Okay. Um, like there are tatters of his shirt around his waist. It feels like he probably fully bared out at one moment, and just ruined his clothing in the process. Fuck. Uh, I'm gonna say like, I'm gonna offer to help him any way I can now, but I can't accompany him to go and find his uh, children, as there's maybe. something more important we've been tasked with. Maybe he could join us. Maybe. Kill two birds with one stone. No. He just looks at the three of you, just r rubs his eyes and puts a hand inside his pocket. I, I, I cannot come. I cannot do anything. I must make sure my family is safe. But if, if you'll see him anywhere, he pulls out a folded photo and just pushes it into Gregor's hands. If you'll see him, just... Tell him Papa Bear says, come home. Hey, okay. I, I can promise. Will do. And with that, he seems to at least gain a little more resolve. He pulls himself to his feet, lets out a ragged, kind of, kind of scratched throat sigh as clearly the wailing has taken a toll on his body. <sighs> But I got I would not wish to suggest that we are enemies. But I would like to think that at one point maybe we were friends. Definitely. But the the time for that has passed. Right now. I've just made it all all I can do is make a promise to you. 
and yeah, he grimly smiles and extends his hand for a firm handshake. Yeah, I'll, I'll shake his hand back. That's Vidanya, Gregor. That's Vidanya. <laughs> After me. And yeah, at, at that he hears the snap of rifle fire from a few seats over. His head turns to it and he starts starts off at what begins as a jog and eventually evolves into a flat run as he disappears down, side, down an alleyway. Well, well. The squid has friends. Didn't think it was and possible. Friends. It's a, it's a long story. You got into a fight at a party, then you brought the police <laughs> to his door, he beat you into paste. Ah. <laughs> it's what friends yeah. do. Um, you know what, actually? That, I will explain the story, because... Including the time you tried to climb inside his ass. <laughs> well, I might, I might leave that part there. <laughs> it, oh my god. I still remember it, that shit. Don't think I don't. <laughs> it's just a little tin. <laughs> I think you phrased it as you know that thing where they thought Ant Man was going to do the thing to Thanos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disgraceful. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna explain what happened with him actually because it explains how I got involved with Site B and should hopefully ease Alexis and Kramer's mind a bit. Um, and yeah, I just kind of explain how I was once just a homeless man trying to find my way in the city. Eventually became friends with Artemy until, well, we kind of got in a fight. <laughs> and the next thing I knew, I woke up in a metal coffin inside Site B and they tortured me until I worked for them. Wait, and that's how wait, I wait, 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 wait. They took you to Site B? Whilst I was unconscious, yeah. What the hell is Site B then? <laughs> I only saw it briefly on, from the inside. All I know is that I think they're looking for people like us. Oh, oh, um, I, I don't like this. I don't like this even a little bit. Me neither, but I think this is the best chance we've got. I think this is the only chance we've got at this point. Yeah. Unless you've got any ideas, Kramer, maybe you can get us out of this mess? What, to go to Site B? Yeah. Or get us out of the city. Couldn't you make, like, a teleportation circle or something like that? You're magic. Uh I, I mean, I probably could. Do you have a couple of dead chickens? Uh, do you want a no. cook, do you want a coked up warlock to do a teleportation circle right now? <laughs> Half well, of you will end I up mean, in Milwaukee. I, I thought, <laughs> yeah, I'll say we could end up in Milwaukee. We could end up in on fucking Mars for all we know. But I, I could try it. We've done teleportation before. What is Milwaukee? It's uh, <laughs> it's my old home back in the U.S. of A. Oh, nice place. Forests and I almost wanted you to roll <laughs> fake there. <laughs> <laughs> it's Milwaukee. I... Fuck you. All right, yeah, fuck it. I'll, you know, I'm actually no, 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 no. Don't. <laughs> what you want to try to make America sound tempting? Yes, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say it from the means. I'm gonna do it from the means. Yeah, um, I mean, and you're also lying, so technically that's a ten. 
Because oh, you got glib, don't you? Uh, fucking hell, how utterly disgusting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just a, 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 an American flag drops down behind you, an American eagle screams <laughs> with a noise that is not the sound of an American eagle as you sell <laughs> you sell Milwaukee for the bountiful homeland of freedom uh, that it absolutely is not, but fuck it, you made it sound good. <laughs> Just, I mean, if you visit in the winter, it's pretty much like Russia, just fucking freezing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly, you'll be just right at home. <laughs> Except the vodka's not as good. Yeah, we can import, it's fine. Not, not at the moment. <laughs> what, whatever. Look, Try drinking look. vodka in America in the 50s and watch yourself get fucking right. beaten up. Well, you know what? That's why there's there's something called home distilleries. All the fat rednecks in the South do that shit. It'll be fine. It'll be good. Yeah. But you, if, you, if you guys want to do a teleportation circle, I'll, I'll break out the book and we can try to figure something out. In my own head, Cannon, you've just went on a long, complicated rant about Rich Evans. <laughs> <laughs> Who? The god of Milwaukee. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, well, you know what? In that case, if no one else knows where to go, then I will uh, break out my book of spells, and I will go through and run through real quick to see if I can find anything decent. Whether it's a teleportation spell, or a, here's a convenient path for you to go down to find out your location. Like a GPS mm-hmm. spell or not. Okay. I will say one thing, though, because I forgot you had conditions active at the moment, and I'm kind of a dick. That's okay. Go for it. Am uh, I uh, hungry or winded? Uh, both. Oh. Well, don't have to sound okay. that aroused by it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it'll hit me. Game's just perpetually oh, horny on fucking main right now. Um, so if you want to roll with Strange, it'll be at a minus one. Okay. All right. Then let's do. Then in that case, I will try to find a decent spell. Fuck. Mm, that is deeply unfortunate. However, it's also very funny. Uh, mark experience. Okay. Um, as I'm assuming you, do you have like a full blown like grimoire like on your person, or is it more like a pocket book you've got like your essentials in? For the most part, I, I feel like with who I am, carrying around a giant fucking like book isn't exactly the most like, you know, it, it's not exactly practical. So the book would probably be back at the lab. But I would probably maybe carry around like a couple little things here and there. Remember, you know, I I I, I have a coke addiction, so I ain't gonna remember everything. So I'm gonna need the, the little essentials that I need to write down. You know. Uh yeah. You um, you 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 thumb through your your little kind of pocketbook, like trying to find the kind of correct information, and it occurs to you just as you're sitting there, kind of leafing through it, that you. You might have needed, like, scrap paper for something at some point and just ripped a page out to scribble on the back of it. And it occurs to you that the page with this particular spell is currently attached to your fridge with a fridge magnet. With with the words, buy eggs, on the other side of it. Oh. Oh, that's not good. So yeah, you 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 both don't know it and don't have access to find it unless you go and find your actual original grimoire. All right, well, shit. How far is the apartment from here again? I guess we can stop back, and it might be full of bullet holes. Maybe we can get lucky, and and it, the fridge won't be too fucked up. <laughs> no, someone has specifically shot the fridge as much as possible. Just mag dumped <laughs> into it. I mean, you know what? Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I I have another idea. If we got, if we don't want to find a teleportation spell, guys. Gregor is a formless mass. Is he? I do have a backup plan. But go ahead with your plan first. He, I, I, this this is gonna sound very stupid, but maybe 
we can ride on back of him and somewhere oh that's right i forgot there's somewhere we don't know where yeah yeah Why maybe it's tentacles weirdly sized. then maybe it's best not i mean as, as funny as it would be for gregor to sprout tentacles and carry the both of you in like a papoose we, we like just really strapped to his front going. But, uh, yeah, yeah. It, you need to figure out where you need to go right now, and you've got a rough idea about where Site B is. Uh, you probably know how to get to your apartments from here, but again, it's going to be crossing at least a small section of the city to do so. Hmm. What right, if... Well, okay, what I, if... I have my void pocket. If you guys want to uh, test it and hop on in there. A void pocket? Climb inside the old man. Get, I... in, get inside the old man, Shinji. <laughs> Is there... I don't think anyone's come out of there, but uh, you'll probably be fine. I, I don't. I don't know how I feel about that. I watched you make a horrible. I don't even know what to call it. Black hole with that. I'm not sure how I feel about getting inside of it. How? Oh, how about? Alexi, could you maybe go to the spirit realm and ask someone for... Wait a minute. Does, does Torin know? Mm. I mean, we could ask for directions, but who's willing to say, oh yeah, there's fucking... Yeah, our secret base is like right over there. I mean, don't I... It may be hazy, but don't I know the way to Site B? Because I left through the front door, right? I also know the way to oh, Site yeah. B, because so, I went there okay, to so deliver here's a the package. Thing. You don't need directions. It's getting there that's the tricky bit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, then, yeah, just, just, I don't know, fucking, uh, you could just grab, do the tentacle thing, like you... Sab mentioned earlier, and just carry us there. It's either that, or we gotta go back to my place and, uh, Fine. Could I can't imagine I'm that fast to carrying people. I will just throw up a sign yeah. here and go. You is if you're going through the city, we do, It doesn't necessarily matter how you're doing it. <laughs> I will pull back the curtain. I will go. There is a table of events, and every time you move a bit through the city, I you roll and a thing happens. It's almost oh. like I'm trying to do vignettes that are tying up plot threads. All right, well, in that case, I'm just going to follow with what we need to go with. <laughs> wait, 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 I've got a crazy idea. Oh this might God. be crossing the line here. But what if we just walk? All right, fine, <laughs> we can walk. All right, let's walk. It's going to be a while. I saw I I uh, that earlier. Games can just the use his... I was going to say, games can use his racial power. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking. What's the matter with you? Are you fucking stupid or something? That's that's New Yorkers. They're a different species. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. All right. Well, then I guess then let's just get walking. You know. Yeah. Normally, people from Milwaukee get action surge, but that's really just the cocaine. Let's that's try. Fair. Let's try to keep off the streets. Uh, I feel oh. that. Uh, I don't. I don't want. I don't know about you two, but I most certainly do not want to get caught in crossfire. No, that's fair enough. Maybe through the back alleys and shit would probably be the best. Best way to go about it. Alright. Sounds good. So, Let's do it. if that's happening, would either Gregor or Robert Kramer... Uh, oh, no, it's not Gregor, sorry. Would Alexi or Robert Kramer uh, like to make a real roll? I will say, games, uh, get rid of Winded. Alright. Uh, the hunger will unfortunately stay until we uh, resolve that. Okay. But, uh... Yeah, whoever wants to make that roll may. Oh. Uh, You're an OG? I'm, I'm, I'm You're an old guy? <laughs> <laughs> I think at the moment, actually, um, Alexi is rolling better as a minus one rather than Kramer, who's running at a minus. Oh no, sorry, shit! You still got hit and run as well, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah, you you both got it bad. Sorry. <laughs> Oof. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna flip a coin to decide who rolls? 
I mean, it's technically random chance, it's just who gets the blame for rolling badly. Yeah, yeah. I'll do it. Who cares? <laughs> do it. Do it. Roll exclamation point, right? Uh, exclamation point roll. Yes, exclamation point roll. There we go. Then 2d6 minus 2. Actually, wait, wouldn't it be minus 3 with you? Minus 3, I believe so. Well, get ready to get some XP, unless you roll really well. Alright, boys. I believe in you, you can do this. No. Nope. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I take that back, sorry. Well, mark experience. Yep, definitely mark experience. Uh, and then just roll one more d6. Man, you are rolling exactly on the stuff that's going to be relevant to you guys. This is fantastic. All right, perfect. Um, so yes, you take um, Alexis' advice and you start. <laughs> no one's going in the vault hole, Gregor. Stop it. So <laughs> <laughs> then, my new nightclub. Anyway, um, <laughs> God, uh, you're following the back alleyways as a. Uh, as Alexei recommended, which was probably a fairly smart idea, as the further you move through the city, the more active the fighting gets. You can hear the shout, the kind of shouting of uh, barely controlled orders as people stumble through tight-knit corridors and fight from room to room. You see broken glass, and at one point someone does just come bodily backwards out of a third-story window and just thump headfirst down into the streets but in front of you. It is getting... Dense. The smoke from mul from many fires now is starting to roll through the streets in thick clouds, cloying the throat and uh, causing the eye to strain. You have to wipe the occasional just sore tear from the corner of your eye as you move. It is getting more dense and more action packed the further in you go until taking an alleyway uh, and rounding a corner, you see a small van that is parked up at the rear door of a building. It is pretty heavily packed with suitcases and a bedroll that seems to have been just haphazardly lashed with a belt to the roof rack. Coming out of the coming out of the back door are a couple of children, two boys and a girl. The youngest looks to be about five years old. They're being shepherded by a young woman and a slightly older but still relatively young man. Um, who are fussing over the children and trying to keep them calm, even as bullets rip into plaster work above their heads. None of them notice you, but the final figure that steps out of the doorway, Kramer, you recognise. It's Svetlana, your assistant. She okay. is still in her uh, white white um, coat that she normally wore. Her hair is something of a mess and her glasses have just been idly tucked into a pocket. She is soot-stained and you can see her hands are not only darkened from dirt but lightly blistered around the kind of fingertips. She is just quickly pulling what seem to be just bottles of water out from a bag and handing them to each of the children to make sure they've got something to drink. And it's as she slams the door shut and slaps on the side of the, bit, uh, the van to signal they should leave that she... Uh, Realizes she is being watched. <gasps> oh, Doctor Kramer, you're alive, and she just looks at Gregor. Oh, oh no! It's it's a long story, a very long story. I don't know if we can get into it right now. Doctor Kramer, right. that man is going to try and capture you. Yeah, we we already we already went down that path. He's he's it ain't it's a long story, but it's not that's not the case anymore. Are you are you all right? She looks, but given that you are all standing around relatively non-combative, she just swallows for a second, tenderly kind of rubs her hand across her cheek. They they burnt they burned the museum. They, they 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 just broke down the doors and they, they, they tore everything out. I know much of it was propaganda and just state information, but they got into the back rooms, into your laboratory. I was able to save a few things. 
your your books and some of your notes, but what books and notes? <laughs> uh, she kind of goes back to the doorway, opens it, and pulls out a carpet bag. It's a pretty large, heavy one, and it kind of clatters to the ground heavily. Um, everything I could find that was yours, um, including the things you kept in your safe. I, I'm sorry, I copied down the combination in case you were too. She that's, taps the that's side of fine. her head. You'll know. Um, that that's fine. I appreciate it. You you have to understand. I. I don't know what's got into these people. They they are killing anyone they can find who has any level of complicity with the regime. The only reason I got away is that they were too busy. They got it'll, the, it'll be alright. It'll be okay. They got the nice old man who cleaned the taxidermies. And it'll be okay. Look, you're, they you're used doing... him in formaldehyde, and they set him on fire. Hey, don't don't think about the formaldehyde and the fire. It's gonna it's gonna be okay. Uh, uh, can can I? Uh, how many times can I use demanding voice? Uh, I mean, if you want to just mentally tell her to calm down, if you want to just use magic to calm her down, then sure. The hunger's still gonna be a problem here, though. All right. Well, I will say case... at the very least, um, compelling voice will give you a plus one. Hmm. Well, in that case, then I, I'm going to I'm going to try without the compelling voice in case the hunger comes into effect. To uh... I mean, it's going to be hunger no matter what. All right. Well, then fuck it. Then I'll use a compelling voice then and try to get her to calm down. Okay. Give me two d six plus one. Okay. Let's see. Two. 2d6 plus 1. Shit. Alright, that's a partial success. That's that's at least something. Okay. Do you want her to be calm, but lose lucidity? Or do you want her to remain lucid and simply to begin processing and naturally resolving her feelings? I want to go with the latter one. Okay. You are at least aware that your commanding voice can, if it's used to bypass strong emotion, just cause someone's emotional capacity to temporarily shut down, which can honestly be a liability, especially in a dangerous situation like this. So you you, you ease up on it just enough, just enough to push her in the right direction, not to just resolve her feelings at a moment's notice. She looks at you for a couple of seconds, blinks, and you do see her just force one long, cleansing breath. Now, now look. Alright? It's, it's... I know it's all... It, everything's gone to shit, but it's going to be alright. You just gotta breathe in, take your time, do your thing, now, me and our, my uh, comrades over here, we got to get to Site B to see if we can't resolve all this. Is there any chance maybe you can get some of these children, get a couple of people, see if you guys could maybe find a good hiding spot or potentially get out of town? She gestures to where the van has driven off and goes, oh, that, that was my, my sister and her husband and the children. I... I never really had time for that kind of thing. Um, I was going to try and look for you, but it seems that you found me, so really I should have got on the van. So now I'm starting to feel like a bit of an idiot. Um, you're, you're, you're not an idiot. It's fine. It's going to be fine. See see if you can't get some transportation out of there. or I, I don't, But you got to make sure you look out for yourself. I, are you not leaving? What, where are you going? Site B. Then I'm going with you. Are you sure about this? When I took this job alongside Agent Orion, I promised to not only work alongside you, but to ensure your safety. I am not some just silly little girl, you know. I am a professional academic. I care about my colleagues. I never thought you were a silly little girl. That sounded weird, but I never thought that at all. 
then yeah. in that case, just please be careful. Keep your head down, and I guess for now, follow us. We're we're probably gonna, you know, I, I might be able to find something in this, in those books that may help us. Ah, uh, I will, I I will carry your bag. She just grabs it and slings it over one shoulder, uh, leaves it around inside it, and pulls out one of your larger grimoires. Uh, here you go. I think this is the main one. Yes. It, Perfect. It, it smells of smoke, but uh, yeah, it is intact. In that case, can I go through and potentially, like, see if I could find? I, I may, may, maybe not the best. Like, is there any chance that maybe I could find a somewhat decently quick way to get to Site B, like maybe a spell or something? I mean, you'd mostly be looking for a map at that point. I'll be completely honest with you. Hmm. Well, then I want to look through it and see if I can find anything that would be advantageous to us. If you want to scan through it, then absolutely. If you just want kind of lore. Um, I will say, do you want something... Hmm. Okay, tell you what. We'll start with what you want to find. And then we'll see what you get. So, uh, specifically, I, do you want to find something useful you could use... Or something information based that would just give you more context as to what's happening. Can I find both? I would say on In a very spot? on a very good roll, yes. But All I will right. say, what's your preference? I think at the moment I'm trying to find something that's useful. Okay. Uh, in which case, yeah, give me a roll. It will be strange, but hunger will kick in. However, because you've got self to warlock, just roll with a normal plus one. Two, okay, two d six plus one. Let me. Uh, uh, oh, whoops! I forgot to spell roll properly. That probably wouldn't help. No, editing it doesn't work. It has to be the first time it's printed. Ow. Yeah. Fuck my tit. Ew. There we go. Oh. Okay, so you wanted something useful. You pour through this grimoire, and you are trying to just... just Everything is rolling through your head. Just th these spirits, and whatever the fuck Gregor is supposed to be, and th all this chaos that's hey. going around, and your hands and eye fall open on a particular page. The cutting of the string. A spell that is intended to disengage a spiritual spiritual entity from its source of strength. Basically starving it. It is something that is normally used to weaken spirits before they are banished or to put them under someone's control. To control their ability to feed themselves, but... As you look at it, it does come to your mind that these nature spirits, what Kirill told you, she does seem to intend to harness this bloody carnage in some way. That maybe <coughs> this would be a way to... That maybe this would be a way to cut and spoil her attempt to utilize this violence for her own end. And come to think of it, it might even fuck Gregor up a little bit as well. If if that was oh, what you wanted to do. Not. For now, not so much. But I think it might be useful if the ends come to the means. But for now, let's see if we can we can find a better solution maybe once we get there. That's cool. So you're making your final push through towards Site B. Yes. And I will need Robert Kramer Esquire to oh, wow. roll me what will basically work out to be 2d6 uh, 2d6 minus 2. Okay. Uh, you know what? You roll better than literally everyone else. <laughs> and could you give me a roll with 1d6? Just straight up. Two D six plus just, one. Just just one. No, just one D six. Okay. One D six. 
Oh, fuck. Hey, I'm so mad. No, 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 that's fine. That's fine. In fact, that actually works pretty much. Yeah. Uh, cool. I'm, I'm just mad at Game Master's, like, perfect rolls. <laughs> <laughs> You say perfect like he's actually rolled a full success so far, when he really hasn't. Better than mine. <laughs> uh, as, yes, you are now escorted. Um... Wait a second, I shall just undo that. So you're now being followed by Svetlana, and you follow these meandering alleyways out towards Site B, and you have to pass somewhat penultimately, through the open garden district where there are more public gathering areas, a bandstand, some somewhat nicely tended gardens where children can play and sport can be, well, well, sport can be conducted, inflicted upon the general populace as is its way. However, the gardens have taken on a new use, the bandstand in particular. There is a ragged group of people, many of them wearing red scraps of material tied around their arms or around their necks, surrounding the bandstand. Upon which, Alexei, mm -hmm. you recognize Vanya. Oh no! He is bedraggled almost. He is covered in streaming bolts of red cloth. His eyes are wide and his face almost sunken. At this distance, it's almost impossible to hear what he's saying, but the viciousness, the intensity of his speech is absolutely rapturous, consuming him with vigor. And furthermore, behind him, marshaled into a line by men with rifles, you see your co-workers including uh -oh. the blooded figure of Sobodov, his shirt sleeves tattered, his balding head split and bleeding. As they are moved inexorably towards makeshift gallows. Oh, okay. Uh... Oh, boy. Um... Uh... Uh... As you are watching this, his voice, um, Vanya's voice, carries on the wind, and you can just hit catch the oft kind of errant phrase. And punishment! Suffering! These are cleansing things! These are healing things! In death, we have suffering, and in suffering, we have meaning! Their deaths will cleanse this city! They will help us heal as a people. Blood uh, will wash away blood. Alexei is going to use his spirit sense uh, to try and determine if something supernatural is motivating this bloodlust. Unless, unless that's already been well established. Uh, I, will, I will say, that. don't even need to roll for this because this is okay. like you like turning on your spirit sense. It's like a lighthouse is standing there at the bandstand. Okay. However, uh, something is very clear. This is only the life spirit. The life spirit is flowing through him, like someone grabbing onto a live electricity main. His body is moving, but it's almost like it's simply moving along with the pulsations of the spirit itself. His teeth are gnashing, his muscles are taut. It's breaking his body apart as it flows through him, but it is moving nonetheless. Uh... Well, there is one thing I can do about that. Uh, Alexei is going to attempt to exercise the life spirit from his body. This will require you getting a bit closer, I will have to say. Okay. Uh... Ge gentlemen, those are my colleagues up there. I cannot leave them to die. And whatever it is that has a hold on Vanya, I'm going to try and remove it. You need help? Ah, uh, yes. Help for hands. I need you... <laughs> no, there's no one called <laughs> hands here. We're in Russia. Sorry, we're in the Ukraine. 
I will need you to protect my body. If worst comes to worst, I will need you to pull me back from the edge. Alright, sounds good. Alright. Uh, keep your heads down uh, and move quickly. Uh, point out the ones you don't want me to kill. <laughs> uh, Alexi points to the... Uh, <laughs> The his comrades uh, being put on the makeshift gallows, and to uh, Vanya all wrapped in cloth. Although, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, everyone else is fair game as far as Alexi is concerned. Let's fucking go. <laughs> oh shit! Let's get that right. bread, metaphorically speaking. So does uh, does BFG edition starter playing in the background as Gregor just cracks his knuckles? <laughs> 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 the violence has escalated. All right. Uh, uh, so yeah, I will. I will say, um, I'm gonna need Kramer and Gregor to make fury rolls to keep this crowd away Ooh. from Alexi. The better you do, the better. Uh, Alexi will have to do on this roll. Plus, 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 before anyone rolls, one of you can also take Svetlana as assistance, which will give you an extra plus one. I, I think maybe... I feel... I don't know. Gregor, do you have a good fury? Because mine's uh, minus one, and I can probably <laughs> at least cancel out the minus one. Okay, so here's the thing. Mine is zero, so if you cancel <laughs> that out, we're both zero. I mean, yeah, but... I, I, I mean, mean, to be fair, so here's the thing. Gregor, you'll still be able to use tentacles as you are walloping people. I'm assuming you're going like, okay, mask off, I'm tentacling some motherfuckers here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so My you'll be able to take a plus one that. Oh, God, no, an angry wax candle is beating up people in the town square. <laughs> um, I will say, like, you'll be running with a plus one. Best case scenario, either, either Gregor rolls with a plus two, or... He rolls with a plus one, and Games rolls with a neg with a net zero. Oh, actually, sorry, no, with a net negative two, as you still no, actually, no, no, no. This is perfect for the hunger. The hunger wants you to hurt people. Ah. Oh. So yeah, it will be basically just a net zero for you. Actually, hmm, fuck it, nerves of steel. I'll say, cause I'm being fucking generous here. I'm going to say, yeah, you can actually <laughs> take that. You'll be rolling at a, no a neg... Uh, right. <laughs> at the moment, both of you... Okay, Gregor would be rolling with a plus one, by default. No extra bonus. Mm. Games would roll with a total net zero right now, and c either of you could take that extra plus one. I, I still feel like I... Since she's my assistant to begin with, but I, I should yeah. get that plus one. I feel like she would be a detriment to me because <laughs> I might accidentally kill her. <laughs> so yeah, I don't want to take that plus one. Well, the tentacles right. might just awaken something in her. Oh, <laughs> oh like no. that scene in Carnage. Yes. In, in oh god, I, I fuck, I'm so sorry about that. I'm, if that guard survived, it's awakened something in him. <laughs> he needs his wife to just put, put, shove a pool noodle down his throat. No, he can't get it up. Jesus Christ! <sighs> All right. Whatever, baby. I need you to do this. All right, I'm I'm rolling two d plus one, two d six plus one. Yep, I think I'm rolling that as well. Oh, okay. I'm um, gonna fuck this up. You didn't fuck, fuck it up. up. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> Even with a plus one, you got your shit slapped. God damn. Okay, oh, well. Damn. Okay, so we'll start with Gregor. As yeah, you 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 fucking mask off. You go into full horrible, horrifying tentacle mass. Yay! And unfortunately, um, it turns out a lot of the people in this crowd had guns. Oh. And they just see you coming, and as one, level their firearms at you and rinse you with automatic gunfire. It's not that it kills, it does, it's not that it causes you significant damage, but it blows off most of your extremities, basically wearing you down to just an angry, thrashing nubbin. Oh, no, just... I'm the pole noodle. <laughs> uh, as, yeah, I will say just for the moment, um, yeah, give yourself... 
I would say a major condition, but just... Oh, you know what? Fuck it. Moderate condition. Nugget. <laughs> As it's going to take you a while to pull yourself back together. You know what? The picture is perfect for this. Oh, no. I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Steve's you know going into his ending, <laughs> spicy... Oh, no! <laughs> I need someone to hold me and carry me like that now. I mean, to be fair... If uh, if Svetlana's free after this, she might just be on <laughs> noodle carrying duty. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, um, so that happens, and somewhat lucky for Kramer and Svetlana, that takes most of the armed response away from you two. <clears throat> um, Kramer, are you employing like magic for this, or are you just going to run up there and punch someone in the face? I think it probably would be for the best that I employ some sort of like fucking magic sorcery shit. Yeah. So, you, and are you trying to be lethal here, or restrained and not cause lasting injury? I think, just because it's uh, Alexi's co-workers up there, that I'm probably... I I want to try to keep casualties to a minimum. Um. Okay, so you just kind of use some kind of just stat, you know, your standard movie blast which just knocks people away. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. Uh, as, yeah, you just kind of reach out with both hands and just push this wave of force, uh, bowling several people over as they do so. Um, kind of carry, kind of, you do do that, and a few other people have kind of got round the exterior of your shunt and start running towards you, only for Satlana to just raise her one hand, move her fingers in a complicated pattern, and the, all th- and those three people just kind of fall over, clutching their groins. Oh. Oh, damn. Svetlana just kind of pauses, looks at them. Sorry! <laughs> I I must apologise, Doctor. I was looking through some of your works and I found some interesting ones about, um... Well, they're the sort of spells that, you know, ladies of the night would need to know, and apparently that one is very effective. Oh, that man has thrown up. Oh, I'm very sorry! Uh, don't, don't, don't worry about it. I guess it's actually kind of humorous. It inflicts testicular torsion upon a male attacker. Sounds good. <laughs> Fuck. You can just hear someone just on the floor going, My balls! <laughs> However, something inside you swells almost. You feel something be fed. And I want you to erase the hunger as a moderate condition. Uh, and I want you, want you to, to have major. the... I want it to be a major condition now. Oh, fuck. Alright, well, I'll put this right here. As your attempt to not do damage feels unsatisfying. These are bad people. And bad people deserve to be hurt. I mean, really hurt. Like, would anyone really judge you if you just... You know, applied that force, but just like at neck height, just scoop their heads off. Or like, you know so many spells for like conjuring fire, or pulling the blood out of someone. Like, there are dark, cruel magics that you know, you've you've seen the tomes, you know it exists. It would be so not easy. Not now. Alright, not now. The time will come. And but so not will now. I. <laughs> well, don't 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 you worry. When when I need the hunger, well, I'll, I'll need you. He'll unleash the chokey wax. The chokey wax. I like that. I like the chokey wax. Don't die on a set. I gotta stitch you, fucker. Dark, dark oh. magic. <laughs> At the very least, I think the testicular torsion spell would be like a counter spell to that. <laughs> you yeah, can't probably. wank if your balls are flipped over. <laughs> the CBT spell. Oh, God. <sighs> Cock and ball torture, comrade. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. God, I'm in so much pain right now. Psychological <laughs> and physical. <laughs> uh, 
And with that, I'm afraid it's going to be a wash, as one guy did very badly and the other guy just kind of did okay. Uh, so, Alexa, you're not going to be getting any bonus on this roll. Okay. I'm afraid also hit and run is still going to take effect as your physical body is still peening you. Oh my god. <laughs> Easy. All right. Um, so, that counteracts my strange, so it's just a straight roll, I think. Uh, oh no, you'd still be using exercise spirit, so plus one. Plus one. Hey, that's not bad. That's fair enough. So, you are... Moving through the spirit realm to do this, I'm assuming. Uh, yes, uh, Alexei uh, uh, brings his his mind to a focal point, and then uh, uh, his essence bursts through into the spirit world, and he begins uh, uh, pushing his essence towards uh, 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 Vanya uh, with the intention of cleansing him of whatever it is inside of him. You push your essence forth into the world, into this other world. The bandstand in this world is a great dark tree. Its branch is barren. The noose is hanging from it, made of twisted vine and thorn. Many bodies decorate it. All fresh, all bleeding. Men and women. Soldiers and civilians, even children, hung like fruit, like decorations. In the same way that men would gather sap as they tapped into a tree, bowls litter the floor, catching the blood that drips from their bodies. In this world, Vanya is resplendent. His red robes in this world made of freshly flayed flesh. His own flesh pulled around him, flayed from his own body and pulled into intricate patterns, folded. Almost like the way that parchment is folded around meat on a butcher's counter. Light bursts from his eyes, from his mouth. He is joyful, but it is the light forcing the joy through him as you can feel the agony roll through his body you reach out and you hear another voice a voice under the mad ranting a woman's voice a woman's voice who you remember from a long time ago or at least it feels a long time ago sat around a campfire sharing beer and eating meat. Kirill's voice. Ah, if it isn't the lost little Laparachik. You're supposed to be dead, little Laparachik. I hate to disappoint. <sighs> and what? You want to save these people? I have more. There are always more. You won't have these ones. I know this, Kirill. I am coming for you. You think you and your sister are strong. But I know. Anything that is rooted here in the physical realm, that looks human, can be hurt. And let me tell you, Kirill, I have been building up something. I have been... Letting the shaman's soul will slowly grow stronger and feeding the darker aspect and it is hungry for you, Kirill. You will... you will... you, uh, you cannot escape the crossroads. Great jaws devour the sky and I will send you flying into them. Now be gone from this body! I... <laughs> Uh, uh, Alexei's essence flares with bright light uh, uh, the shaman's soul manifesting as powerfully as he can uh, uh, in, within the spirit world 
uh, and uh, uh, what little there is of Alexei Volkov uh, blends into the uh, the shaman soul. There is no scream. Merely an annoyed. Very well, little Apalachik. I will see you soon. And then the light vanishes. The strings from this puppet are cut. Vanya collapses from the scaffold, gasping as if he has not bre- taken a breath in hours. Vanya, are you well? Uh, 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 Alexei goes and, uh, uh, or rather, I guess Alexei pulls himself back into his body and then, uh, uh, begins, uh, making his way over to Vanya. Unless, of course, there are discouraging soldiers nearby that don't want him to do that. The soldiers were predominantly occupied with taking care of the horrifying mass of tentacles that just tried to kill them. Sure. Uh, so they are kind of distracted at the moment, uh, and have not. And to be fair, most of the crowd has started to disperse now that they are getting their shit roundly slapped. <laughs> okay, excellent. So at the moment, uh, there are just like your colleagues, Vanya uh, and uh, Silbadov, who is at this point it's like just edging towards uh, a fall <laughs> to a fallen knife that's just kind of embedded itself on the floorboards. Vanya is just barely being able to kind of just push himself up from the scaffold itself. He's just lying on his chest, his arms just propping up under himself. He looks thin. Oh. Uh. Uh. Alexei's going... Yeah, Alexei's going to make his way over, and he's going to do his best... Well, uh, I think first he's going to, uh, free his comrades. Uh, and uh, Sobolov uh, notices you first and foremost, and just with yeah. just wide eyes, his his they are all gagged. But Sobolov mm-hmm. just kind of just jerks his head to kind of indicate you should come over here. Uh, he he does so. Uh, he ungags Sobolov and begins working at the binds on him. <sighs> I've I've seen some fucking workplace friction in my time, but that takes the piss. What is Something. wrong with these people? Tell me, Soborov. Do you believe in the spirit world? Do you believe in things that cannot be touched and felt, but that still have great influence on our world? I am a Christian man, yes. Then let me tell you right now. The things that are happening here are not natural. And there is some dark presence here can't explain it, and I think even if I could, you would not understand fully. All I can say is that do not think too harshly on these people. There is something behind them, pushing them. Some devil, if you will. Oh, don't worry. When the, when the command get here, when they roll on this city, they're going to tear out this whole fucking revolution by the root. They will pound your fucking city into the dirt, he shouts to the crowd. Fucking traitors! Revolutionaries! So what if? I agree, but right now, we don't have time. Is there anything you can do to help us get to Site B? The only other transmitter to the outside world has been destroyed. (sighs) Good, you want to do the same as me. Excellent, excellent. Um, I... I found my jacket. It's around here somewhere. I had my official papers in there. I was going to try and get in there and send a call myself, but if you could do it, then so much the better. I I can, yes. Excellent. Um, he just kind of rubs his wrists and sets about untying his com- uh, his colleagues, yours as well. Listen, inside my court, with my papers, there are the access codes. At the moment, you can only broadcast inside the city. If you use the access codes, you can go directly to the Kremlin. You can call in reinforcements. We can get the city retaken. Who knows, by the end of today, we may be heroes. It's entirely possible. I... 
I don't want to be a hero. I just... I want this all to be over. I'm, I'm sorry, Sora. Uh, and also, I want the raise. <laughs> and uh, uh, with that, Alexi returns his attention back to Vanya. He just goggles out for you for a couple of seconds. Just the me. audacity of this bitch. <laughs> Listen, I just saved his life. He doesn't have any... any uh... The winamp of this bitch. Okay, never mind. Um... <laughs> If, if we're, I don't even think we're going to make it out of here. <laughs> Alexi just thought of that. No, no, no. That's cool. That's cool. Um, and yeah, you're, you're returning your attention to Vanya. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, as as uh, Sobodov just realizing that he can't get the circle stomp he wanted to get in on Vanya, just business himself with escorting his uh, with his, his colleagues off the scaffold and away from the uh, mob. Vanya is just pressing his face against the floorboards. You can hear his breath is raspy and slow. Vanya? Vanya? What happened? What do you need? She said... She said... She said we could have our home back. She said we could make the Soviets go home. We could be a free country again. She said there would be a price, but... I didn't... I didn't want to think it would be like this. This is... This is how it is. We danced, you know. Xenia, such such a pretty girl. She was afraid of her sister, you know. I should have been smarter. Kirill, she doesn't care about us. She never did. She just wanted as much blood as she could spill. I know. I know, Van. I will make her pay for every drop she has spilled. Why was she afraid of her sister, Vanya? Xenia. She was death. But she was the little death. The giving death. The death that nourishes, nourishes the soil and heartens the soul in memoriam, the death that strengthens. Kuril is the bleeding life, the life taken, the life consumed. He looks across to where the thrashing nugget is (laughs) laid out on the grass. The only reason Kirill was scared of that thing was merely that its appetite could outstrip her own. She finally saw a predator that could beast her. (laughs) And she was scared. See? A thin, almost paper thin skinned hand grips your wrist Xenia was with me not long ago we we have a triage south of here it's at the border of site where the site B is we are trying to take it we are trying to get past the perimeter she was trying to help. I tell her I loved her. Tell her I'm sorry. I will. I should have been stronger. I should. It's all. It's all right. It's all right. 
Just he's gone. Rest if you oh. He is just still. And now you can kind of see as he lays there, the robes hug an almost skeletal frame. As if whatever was passing through him was eating him alive in the process. Uh, Alexi swallows hard. A uh, single manly tear drips from his eyes. Actually, that's not fair. Uh, he's uh, uh, s several manly tears begin pouring down his face, <laughs> um, uh, and uh, 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 buries his uh, his head in in Vanya's chest, uh, and then uh, he he uh, pulls himself back up, takes a, a big. Uh, wet sniff in and uh uh pulls pulls himself back to uh what he needs to be doing right now and uh but he he uh deep within himself uh he feels the the dark the dark uh uh the dark aspect of the shaman soul sort of pacing in the dark and and uh, gives it just a little bit of uh, uh, reassurance that it will be free and that he's going to let it loose to them. Okay. And uh, away from this scene for just a moment. Gregor. Uh, okay. Hands. Uh, pick up the largest and most active part of your remains. It bundles you in what appears to be some kind of dishcloth. And uh, Svetlana picks you up. Are, are you okay? Um, for the most part, I just need a second. <laughs> just, 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 there's a little <laughs> mouth just appear in the blob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Doctor, he's okay. It's okay. I don't know how to refer to you. You are very strange. Yeah, um, that sounds about right. <laughs> strange is definitely a word for him. Yeah, I would have chose arousing. Okay. <laughs> you you see her just post <laughs> purse her lips in a nice try bun cut kind of away. <laughs> Jesus uh, do you do you like grow new bits of yourself, or do you want me to try and gather up some of these bits and stick them back on? Uh, that is a good question. Um, I think I grow bits back. Oh, okay. Uh, you just tell me when you want to be put down, and I will put you down. Yeah, I gotta grow two little <laughs> tentacle legs first. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Someone's going to think she's running around with a baby until they look closer <laughs> and go, Oh, God! I need, like, a tiny little top hat and a cane. <laughs> oh, God. Hello, my honey. Hello, my baby. <laughs> yeah. I imagine there's just, like, one big eye in the centre of the blob. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so one big eye. Or that. That's also perfectly hideous. <laughs> that depressed penis. <laughs> oh god sorry depressed foreskin oh, oh, that, even that's worse. much worse yeah. <laughs> just foreskin oops all foreskin mm. anyway, moving swiftly on why am I the shit poster all of a sudden you fuckers are a bad influence on me which is impressive <laughs> <laughs> oh god as uh yeah you guys are capable of uh, assembling yourselves again in some semblance of order um, and sure enough, from the square, you can now see the imposing concrete brick of Site B, not too far from here. The gunfire is getting louder, and from this distance, you can very much experience the occasional stray shot zipping overhead, smacking into a nearby building or shattering a window. Nothing direct at the moment, nothing that could be posing a genuine danger, but 
nonetheless, it feels that like you are walking directly towards the heart of this conflict. And I feel like I almost want to let it end there with you approaching Site B. So what the fuck is a clam? I mean, I know what a clam is, but like, <laughs> what's with, what's 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 with the fucking like capitalization there? Cause it's for emphasis. I am trying to remain clam. <laughs> I have Cause no calm fun. has ceased to be an option. Oh, okay. It'll be all right. Breathe. <sighs> That's the first thing on the recording as well, asking you asking what's a fucking clam. <laughs> Shut up! Don't judge me. Oh, I judge you so often. Well, you shouldn't, man. We, come on, man. We we have intellectual, deep, philosophical discussions about things. What? Exactly what I just said. Okay, just just give me a second to get myself into the fucking zone here. Okay. Alright. <sighs> also, that is really yeah. horrifying, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hopefully, that was okay. I really wanted to kind of tie off or at least resolve some things. Yeah. yeah I thought that uh, hopefully was Hopefully I didn't get too melodramatic there. <laughs> I'm also yeah. sorry, games, for going like, have the right emotional reaction to turn dying. Sorry, that was that was. No, you're good. You're, no, 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 no. You're you're good. You're solid. I just thought I do, I just saw I said something last time, and then I was like, wait, did I say something last time? I don't know. If you Fuck. just if you just did like a damn, and then damn, <laughs> stands in the distance. Damn, he dead. <laughs> he ain't gonna be in Russia for three. It'll be it'll be okay. It'll be okay, my sunflower. You will be alive to touch the tail. <laughs> Why are you becoming uh, invent- what the fuck? <laughs> Can you actually do emotions, or do you just resort to terrible humor? Uh, uh, I, I mean, I can do emotions, depending, but it's usually either... I, it's either usually... A, I resort to terrible humor, or I go off the fucking deep end. And I... <laughs> oh, no. uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm 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 in a I'm in a decent mood, so I don't know if I wanted to do that. You know, just imagine in my head that I'm like, or imagine in your head that I'm like secretly crying on the inside or something. You'll be fine, I promise. Oh, you bottle your emotions up, right? <laughs> oh yeah, that little that old chestnut. And the chestnut <laughs> is my emotions that I've shriveled together. Ah, uh, there's a reason why I have a therapist. It all works out. <laughs> Nah, but you're good, dude. Don't even trip. As long as that was relatively fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna uh, try and invent a phone just to show Svetlana the grapefruit technique. (laughs) Oh my god! I don't know what that is, and I don't want to know what it is. (laughs) How you'll? It's Uh, it's legendary. (laughs) (laughs) Me and Steve know some questionable (laughs) shit. That's all I'm saying. It's from, it's not exactly this, but it's from the age of the internet where you would show your friends just fucked up shit. Oh, okay, which um, case I never want to know what that is. Please don't. It, it's not like gory or like that <laughs> kind of fucked up shit. It is, but it is as a, overly a, sexual in nature. As yeah. a tub girl yeah. survivor, I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. tub girl survivor? Uh-oh. Oh, no, you don't no, want to know no, that no, one. No. <laughs> just... I would not wish that upon someone I dislike, let alone someone I do like. <laughs> Jeez. You want to, uh, delicious I have, I have, You should I... look at Blue Waffle. No. Oh, God. <laughs> I it's... don't even know what that one is, and I don't want to know, but I know Oh, that's a bad one. I knew, I knew the rumors of that one, but... <laughs> God, we're horrible little gremlins, but it's such fun being in it. <laughs> 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 
dude. Hell yeah.